Welcome back to the vlog and welcome back to beautiful Papua New Guinea. We're out here at Jerumban today near Mount Hagen. It's a 770 meter airstrip with a 1.5% slope, so nothing too special today. But I am going to be taking you guys on probably one of the most epic valley flights that I have been on in Papua New Guinea. So stay tuned so you don't miss out because it's going to be really awesome. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Ignition, fuel pump, and low start. Get my fuel on. Over 14%, introduce my fuel. And I'm just watching the rate of the ITT come up. And once it peaks out and starts dropping back off, that's when I release the starter. So now it's dropping back off. Release the starter, igniter's off. Ox fuel pump off, generator on. Get our prop forward, alternator, aux bus, and because we're at a bush location, I'm just going to go ahead and throw all my lights on right now, as well as my V2 tracker. So yeah, it's just a half hour flight back to Garoka, and let's go ahead and start up our checklist before takeoff. Our fuel caps and our selectors we've done earlier, controls are good, turn off Betty for this one. She'll be yelling at us, get our radar. This plane actually has radar. This is the only one we have that has radar, which is Zulu. November Tango Zulu. Mid-A-120, one, one, zero, decimal one, November Tango Zulu taxi. November Tango Zulu, yeah. November Tango Zulu taxi jumping, Garoka, below 7,000. November Tango Zulu, what's your first PRB? One POB, and I'll also be tracking up to one five miles right of track. One POB, one five miles right of track. Right, Jimmy. I'll travel the portal. November Tango Zulu. I'll station drop in November Tango Zulu. One two zero decimal one in the Wagi Valley. Back taxiing for departure Garoka. All stations in the Wagi. So yeah, this airstrip looks like a nice golf course. It has a lot of loose grass all over it right now. But it's super short. I mean, it's only like two inches like long, but it's super, super draggy. I don't know what it is exactly about this place. And you typically get tailwinds on takeoff uh, pretty much any time after, like 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning. All right, today we are up here right where the blue dot is. It hasn't quite picked up the GPS position yet. But what we're going to do is typically we could just go well, sort of in a straight line, not quite because there's some mountains right there. But what we're going to do is going to head down here to Chembu and then we go our way down through those valleys down there. And like I said, this is probably one of my absolute favorite valley flights that I have ever done, just because the amount of waterfalls that are coming off either side, there's some villages that you'll be flying by. It's just such an incredible, incredible flight. So make sure you do stay tuned to the end, uh, just so you're not missing out on this. We'll get the airplane. All right, switches and instruments, I am empty today. We're at 5190 for takeoff, so our rotate speed is going to be 50, probably 53. And if we had to come back in for any reason, it's going to be 63 knots for our VREF. So 53 and, oh well, yeah, 62 or 63. Our trim is good. If we're not 40 knots by that tree up there on the right, we'll go ahead and full reverse heavy braking flaps up. Cut off, pull off. Shut off if we are going off. I'll be going off um, straight ahead. That's going to be my safest option. There's people off to the right. And yeah. After takeoff, we're going to pitch for 85. Consider EPL, consider feather. Otherwise, cut off, pull off, shut off. Hit my emergencies, masters, crack my door, 80 full flaps. Obviously, before my master. All right, ignition condition here shortly. We're at 23 degrees in the morning, Celsius at 5,000 feet, so 1380, 1330. Mission condition, flaps 20, fuel and harnesses, 40 down our taxi. All right, rotate at 53, 1330. All right, airspeed is alive. Air is 40, continuing. There's 53. Nose over, get my speed up a little bit. And then we can climb out at 73 knots. 
for our best angle of climb. Get up and out of these trees. So we're climbing out at 740 on the ITT. I've got clouds probably at around 1,000 feet today, something like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and stay a little bit low today. Film I'll be below 7,000. We'll head up to Chembu and then up the valley. Now that we're over 85 knots, we're increasing our airspeed. We'll go at 20 degrees of correction, 10 degrees of flaps. Over 90 and climbing, we'll go zero degrees and also we'll reduce our prop to 2,000 RPM. So we'll just stay here at uh, under 1,000 feet today. We don't have any towers, any high towers, any lines or anything like that along the Wagi Valley that we have to worry about today. And once we got our speed up to around 130 knots indicated, we'll bring our torque back to 1,250. And that's going to be our cruise torque for today. Today, November Tango Zulu departed, Jurabin time 37. We'll be tracking up to 15 miles right of track 104, below 7,000, estimating Garoka 08. Zulu right here, contact Garoka 7, 15 miles west. Contact tower 15 miles, November Tango Zulu. All right, we'll take our landing light off, our engine inlet. We're just at 1,000 feet, so I'm just going to leave that on, and then we can turn our igniters off. Like I said, we're heading up to Chembu, which is another, it's like a paved runway. You might actually be able to find that on X-Plane or Microsoft Flight Sim or whatever you guys are doing. But yeah, if you are a Sim pilot, you fly X-Plane, you fly Microsoft Flight Sim or some other flight simulator, and you want to do this exact same route, or at least from Mount Hagen up to Garoka or even Chembu up to Garoka, this is an incredible flight. Even on a flight simulator, this would be a really fun flight. You can do it probably all the way down as low as like 5,500 feet if you wanted to. And we'll just see how the weather is, the clouds, and the turbulence is this morning. It's pretty calm out, but just depending on how much clouds are in the valley will determine on how low I feel comfortable getting. All right, just on the other side of this hill over here is Chimbu Airport. It is a paved runway. So we're just going to stay at this altitude, see if we can go around this next hill, and then we'll start into the valley. I can also head kind of right through here. Looks like it's pretty clear through there, so... All right, we're just now getting into the head of this valley all the way down. And I'm not going to be taking any, like, photos and stuff or video out of the side of all the waterfalls. I would really love to, but just because I am low to terrain, I really need to keep my eyes out here and focusing on actually what I'm doing. If I had a passenger, that'd be an awesome way to be able to get some. But yeah, there's just so many waterfalls. I'd love to be able to show them to you. There's probably like 10 or 12 just incredible, massive, massive waterfalls along this route. And maybe on the new flight simulator, Microsoft Flight Sim, maybe they'll actually show up. Who knows? Just absolutely incredible views. Along the way, I don't know if you'll be able to see them or not, but there's like houses all along these mountains, and there's gardens on just crazy, crazy steep hills. There's gardens out here that are just cut out into the hills. Incredible. So what I'm going to do, just so I can keep my eyes out here, I'm going to set my altitude bug at 5,700 feet. So that gives me 200 feet. So I don't want to go below 5,500 feet. So if I get down to 5,500 feet, the GPS will have like a like a auditory like noise, and so I can hear, hey, I've, I'm 200 feet below my desired altitude. I need to make note of that, and maybe I'll show you that in a minute so you can see. And that way I know, oh, I don't want to go any lower than this. Pop back up so I can stay within that range. All right, hear that dinging noise? That lets me know I just passed 5,500, so, hey, it's a good reminder. Hey, I don't want to go any lower than this. I'm going to go back up. So here's where, like, it starts getting incredible, like some cliffs and all kinds of stuff. The valley gets really tight, but it widens back out up here. It takes a nice right-hand turn, so this is a really fun valley to take people on, especially passengers that are just visiting or something and you're heading back out this way. This is an awesome thing to be able to show them. All right, it's getting a little bit bumpy. What I'm going to do, in case I have to climb out really, really fast or anything, I'm just going to go ahead and push my prop forward. And that way, if I need to, I can just go 740 on that TT, 20 degrees of flaps, pitch for 73, and 
I'll be climbing out of here at like 1,500 feet per minute. But when I am doing valley flying like this, um, one thing I'm always keeping an eye on is my, my wind, um, windometer or whatever it's called, showing me the direction of the wind, the strength of it, so I know what to expect. The winds are coming from over there, so I'm probably going to be a little bit more turbulent on that side of the valley than on this side of the valley, or this side might have some more updrafts as it comes down the valley and goes up. And if it was bad weather, it's really not. See again, there's 5,500. So clearly it's not. It's beautiful, but what I would want to do is always be hugging the outside of the valley so I can see the furthest around each corner if it was crap weather. Then again, I'm not going to really want to be flying super low in a tight valley if the weather was... I wouldn't be flying here if it was just uh, right above right above me. I wouldn't do that just because you know, there's plenty of room to be uh, doing a 180 in here, but at the same time, it's so much safer just to go IFR and go high and not have to worry about anything like that. All right, from this point on, the valley gets a little bit wider up here, so I'm going to set my bug now for 5,600, so I can stay right around 5,400. Absolutely amazes me that there are little villages all along these mountains. I mean, how awesome would it be to have a view like this? Absolutely incredible. We got some little houses up here on this ridge up here. Uh, raging river down below us. They've got houses down next to the river as well. It's incredible where they have villages everywhere in Papua New Guinea. This right here is probably one of my absolute favorite views I have seen in Papua New Guinea yet. Like we've got some cliffs on this side. We have a waterfall just around this little corner right in here. And I mean, it's probably, I would say, 1,500 feet to maybe 1,800 feet all the way down to the river, all the way up to the very top. Absolutely just spectacular. Yeah, we've got a huge waterfall right over here. Wish I could be able to show you guys this. Maybe I'll have to bring a passenger along and another waterfall right there as well. Views on views, that's for sure. So oh, we're just now coming up to the Asaro and the um, Wagi River Junction, and then it goes out and it's now the Tua River. And I've taken you guys on a flight down there, down to like Wabo, down to Karamui and stuff. If you want to check those videos out, check up here in the corner. Um, and uh, yeah, that's another really awesome flight you can take down to Wabo, really low routes, really awesome. And we actually have that on X-Plane as well. So, uh, one of the patrons actually built Wabo for other people to use. You can actually fly into Wabo, Bush location, pretty awesome. Oh yeah, check out the link below for that, or just check out the video right up here. Now this right here is just incredible. We're going over this little ledge right here, it just drives out. This is just the most incredible place to go camping with the views like this. You have like a nice, huge, kind of cliffy gorge all the way down with the river. All right, now that the wind is starting to pick up a little bit, we've got 10 knots, 11 knots. I'm gonna go ahead and climb up just a little bit, increase my torque for a climb, get up and out of the turbulent air, just because I'm close to this side of the mountain and the wind is just kind of just cresting over top of it because it's coming this way, so that's what's causing the turbulence. Like right over here, um, this is one of my absolute favorite motorcycle rides. I ride motorcycles a lot. Garok is just over that way, so this is probably like a, I don't know, hour and a half, two hour flight or ride, I guess. But right up on this ridge up here, you look out here, this is Mount Michael looking out this way, looking out over the whole valley. Now there's a little house up there on that ridge. I'll see if I can find the clip to show you. What an awesome ride that one actually is. Oh man, this is by far the most beautiful place to fly, at least on this side of the world. All right, now that we're up at a little bit safer altitude, getting out of the wind, I don't want to be down low and where it's really, really tight in this valley. This is a really cool valley. Let me get out of this side and it'll probably be a little bit smoother air. 
but there's some waterfalls along this that just basically trickle down, like right in, right here, where it trickles down probably, I don't know, two or three hundred feet of just continuous little waterfalls all the way down. And then they've got like nice big forest all the way down, down there. I get up here a little bit higher. All right, now we're just getting out into the Asaro South Gap. So we're gonna go ahead and call up Tower here really shortly, let him know where we are, because he's probably expecting us to be more in that way. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that little like flight down this valley. It's, like I said, this is probably my favorite area to fly in all of PNG, and I've flown around most of it, not all of it, but a good majority of PNG I've flown around. All right, now we're at 6,000. Kuroka Tower, November Tango Zulu. They're not going to hear me because there's a mountain right here. Let's uh, hop right up over top of this one. Crocodile, November Tango Zulu. November Tango Zulu, Crocodile. November Tango Zulu in the Asaro South, 6000, your circuit 08. November Tango Zulu, copy runway 35 right, twin light and variable. 500. And the traffic for you, Alpha Norm Echo, Focal 100 is texting this time for Mosby, 17 right. And uh, can you, will you be able to remain to the west of the Epitana Center Line? Hey, from Nova, hug the mountain, November Tango Zulu, and 1019. November Tango Zulu, thanks. Report uh, west of the Epitana Center Line, and uh, track report left base, report again left base. I'm currently left of the center line, and we'll report left base for 35 right, November Tango Zulu. Packed up to a waterfall pretty much directly 500. below me this past weekend with my kids and... Uh, 500. Uh, yes, yes. Thank you, Betty. And I've hiked up this trail right here up the ridge years and years ago as well. Camped up at the top. That's an awesome, really high. That's a really cool hike. I've got a plane taking off. He just wants me to stay out of his takeoff path. I mean, they'll be well airborne and well above me, but... Anyways, let's go ahead and start up our checklist here. Our selectors and brakes are good. Our TAWs, uh, we'll just leave off for now. Our V-REF, which is our approach speed, 5,000 pounds. So slowest we can come in is basically 6, 000, or 61. Yes, I do know that V-REF is actually the speed 50 feet over top of like the threshold, blah, blah, blah. But we use VREF for our full approach speed, and because we are flying slower speeds in this, basically is our VREF because we keep the same speed all the way down to the ground. All right, so our VREF is done. Our lights are done. Our inlet is already done. If we do need to go around, it's power up 20 degrees. It's for 73. Maneuver is required, and reset torque to 740. Alpha Nubeco, ready. Alpha Nubeco, traffic inbound, November Tango Zulu. Kodiak is uh, tracking for left base this time. You have him in sight. Alpha Nubeco, they're going to send you a traffic. We can uh, let them land before we depart. November Tango Echo, uh, will you come in for landing 35 right? Uh, Focal 100 is a uh, happy toll for you. All right, I'm just now a three-mile base, so I can make an immediate turn now. November Tango Zulu. At our November Tango Zulu now, left base 35 right. November Tango Zulu, runway 35 right, clear to land. Oh, left 35 right, November Tango Zulu, on the All right, so that was nice of him to just let me get in. Uh, prop in harness, harness is done, prop is done. We are. Clear to land, 3-5 right. I'm just going to keep my speed up a little bit rather than coming in super slow because he is sitting at the end of the runway. And we'll just make this more of a uh, closer closer base. All right, below 120. We're going to go 20 degrees of laps. And I want to turn my funnel probably around 250 feet to 300 feet. All right, below 108, full flaps, checklist complete. 
little bit high. That's all right. He's at the end of the runway. So I want to get down out of his way as quickly as I can. We'll just come in more closer to 75 knots. Try to touch down just past the 500 foot marker just because that's where this, the runway actually dips down and we'll get a little bit of a smoother touchdown. Otherwise we'll just hit the hump and it'll be a rough landing. All right, continuing. All right. Alpha November Echo, thanks for holding. And uh, one seven right, make a left turn, clear for takeoff. Good takeoff, left turn, Alpha November Echo. Many thanks. Alpha November Echo, No worries. All right, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, hey, give this video a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. It helps the algorithm and helps my videos get pushed to new people. If you guys like watching this kind of content, uh, consider subscribing. I put out videos every single Saturday and every Wednesday as well. And uh, yeah, if you're interested in more kind of on the ground content, you can check out my Patreon page where I have photos you can download and extra videos on the ground and some drone shots and just extra kind of content that I don't normally post here on YouTube. So thanks guys for taking the time to watch and have a good one. Get our blowers off, lights all off, ox bus generator all too. And feather. And wash up the fuel off, this is the last. Get the fuel off, so this is the last flight. Anyways, thanks again, have a good one.